In ancient India, there was a land called Hastinapur that was ruled by King Pandu. He was a wise and noble ruler. His brother, Dhritarashtra, who was blind, had a hundred sons called the Kauravas, while King Pandu had five sons called the Pandavas. The Kauravas were always jealous of the Pandavas and they wanted to drive them away from the kingdom. So Duryodhana, the eldest of the Kauravas, challenged the Pandavas to a game of dice. He made the Pandavas lose everything including their wife Draupadi. After losing everything in this unfortunate game, the Pandavas were forced into exile. They were banished to the forest for 14 years. Yudhishthira, the eldest of the Pandavas, along with his brothers and wife Draupadi, suffered many hardships over the years. One day, as Yudhishthira reflected on their present situation and thought about the life they had left behind, he grew very depressed. A sage passing by happened to notice that all the Pandavas seemed to look very dull and miserable. Greetings, sons of King Pandu. How are you? We are fine, Guru. But you don't look fine. What is wrong? Guruji, I was just thinking about the past. We have lost everything. Because of me, everyone is suffering. Yudhishthira, everyone has to undergo a little suffering in life. It is God's way of testing us. I will tell you the story of King Nala. He too, like you, lost his kingdom in a game of dice, but he overcame all his hardships because he followed the path of righteousness through sheer determination. Please tell me the story, Guru. The Guru started the story. In ancient India, there was a kingdom called Nishada, ruled by the king Virasena. Virasena was well loved because of his valor and the goodwill he showered on his people. He had a son called Nala, who was very handsome, tall and well built. He grew up to be a great warrior and he took over the kingdom after his father. Adjacent to this kingdom, there was another kingdom called Vidarbha. The king of Vidarbha had a beautiful daughter called Damayanti. Damayanti heard about Nala and fell in love with him without even meeting him. She decided to marry him. Nala also heard about Damayanti's beauty and intelligence. Damayanti's father arranged for a swayamvara. In which kings from various kingdoms would be invited and the eligible princes would choose a suitor from among them.
even King Nala was invited to the Swayamvara. O oh, powerful gods and mighty young princes who have come from far and wide, I welcome you all. My daughter Damayanti is highly intelligent and the most beautiful princess to be found far and wide. The luckiest prince will win her as his wife. Let this Swayamvara begin. Although all the gods and princes were invited, Lord Shani, the ruler of the planet Saturn, was not invited as the king did not like Shani. Shani became furious when he realized that he had been deliberately neglected. He wanted to teach the king a lesson. Lord Shani entered the Swayamvara. He stood among the princes and he made everyone, including himself, look like King Nala. My God, what is this? Everyone looks the same. Am I all right? What has happened to me? How will I find Prince Nala from among them? She closed her eyes and prayed to Lord Shiva. Oh Lord Shiva, please give me a sign. Please show me who the real King Nala is. The princess closed her eyes and with full faith in Lord Shiva, took a garland and garlanded a king. He turned out to be the original King Nala and as soon as she garlanded him, all the other kings resumed their normal forms. Damayanti and Nala were both overjoyed. Great King Nala, I am happy that you have won my daughter's hand. I am proud of you. My blessings are with you both. Seeing this, Shani grew very angry. He decided to separate Damayanti from Nala. Nala was a righteous and noble king. He was considered unshakable and completely just. So, Lord Shani waited for an opportunity to catch him when he was most vulnerable. According to Hindu mythology, the period of Saturn in a human life is for seven and a half years and every human is supposed to undergo great trauma during this time. So, Shani decided to create this phase in King Nala's life. King Nala returned with his wife Damayanti to his kingdom. The entire kingdom was happy to see the royal couple. Shani tried to trick King Nala in many ways, but since he was highly pious and righteous, Shani could not find any opportunity to do so. One day, King Nala returned to his palace and cleaned his hands and feet, but he did not clean the back of his feet. Shani took this opportunity and caught hold of his feet. Now, Shani
Shani decided to take revenge against Nala and separate him from Damayanti. After a few days, Damayanti, King Pushkara has invited me to his kingdom. I will visit him for a few days and return. My lord, King Pushkara is your enemy. You must be very wary of him. I know that he is my enemy, but he has changed now. How do you know that? Somehow, I don't like the idea of you meeting him. Why must you be so suspicious? I don't need your advice. I was merely informing you, not asking you. Damianti was terribly hurt by Nala's harsh words. Why are you being so harsh, my lord? You have never yelled at me before. I am leaving tomorrow. Nala reached Pushkara's kingdom. Pushkara welcomed him grandly and treated him like his friend, all the while plotting about how he could grab his kingdom away from him. Welcome, my dear friend Nala. It's an honor to have you here with us. I am also very happy to meet you. Nala, I have arranged a grand feast in your honor. They started playing the game and Pushkara purposely let Nala win all the games. Nala, you told me you don't know how to play but you seem to be playing so well. Why don't we bet on something and play? All right. Let's bet on some horses. Nala, you have won again. My hundred horses are now yours. Let's play with elephants. As you wish, Nala. Hey, I have won again. Nala, this is not fair. You have won my elephants too. This time, I will bet my gold and diamonds. As you say, my lord. Let me roll the dice. I will definitely win this time. Pushkara, it looks like I have beaten you once again. Nala, you won all my riches. I only have my kingdom left with me. Please give me a chance to win it all back. Why don't you bet your kingdom as well, Pushkara? I cannot afford to lose. You have been winning all this time. You will definitely win again, and then just imagine. I don't want your kingdom, but I am confused. I don't know what to do. Just throw the dice, Nala. Be brave. Be careful. Nala threw the dice and Pushkara won. I won. I won. <laughs> I won your kingdom. Now. You are no longer a mighty warrior or a king. Be a mortal. Get away from here. Pushkara, how can you treat me so mercilessly? I am your friend. I cannot have friendship with a beggar. Go away. Take your wife and get out of my kingdom. You wicked, wicked man. You will pay for this betrayal. Queen Damayanti was shocked to hear about this unfortunate incident. Nala left his palace with his wife Damayanti and headed to the forest. Damayanti could not understand what had brought about this sudden change in her usually sensible husband. Unknown to both of them, it was due to the fact that Shani 
was still attached to Nala's feet. The king and queen were now forced to walk barefoot through rocky terrain. from the forests. All their riches and comforts were lost. They roamed like nomads in the forest. Damayanti was convinced that her husband might decide to relieve her of her suffering by leaving her. So, she tied her sari to Nala's shawl. But Nala was racked with guilt. He did not want Damayanti to undergo any further suffering because of him. So, one day, while she was sleeping, he simply got up and left her. He was still under Shani's influence and had no control over what he was doing. In a complete state of depression, he wandered around the mountains and hills, unable to let go to the past, unable to forget his kingdom and his people and unable to forgive Pushkara's betrayal. While Nala was sleeping, Shani took the form of the serpent Kazkotaka and bit him. Nala fainted and became completely dark in color. His form completely changed. Nobody could identify him as Nala. When Damayanti woke up, she was shocked to find Nala missing. My lord, where are you? Where will I go and search for you? What sin have I committed to undergo all these problems? Damayanti looked everywhere for Nala but could not find him. As his appearance had changed, no one could recognize him. She almost lost her mind with grief. Finally, Damayanti took up a position as a maid in the neighboring kingdom without revealing her identity to anyone. Damayanti prayed to Lord Shiva with all sincerity. For seven and a half years, Damayanti searched for Nala everywhere. Nala, in his changed form, joined as a cook in a palace. He soon became an expert cook and was called the King of Cooks. His culinary expertise made him so popular that the nearby kings used to visit the kingdom just to have a meal specially prepared by Nala. Damayanti, in spite of all the obstacles she had faced, remained devoted to her husband. She constantly prayed to the Lord to reunite her with her husband. After seven and a half years of suffering, it was finally time for Shani to leave Nala. Shani, stop troubling Nala. Leave him now. Damayanti also had suffered all these years. My Lord, I tried my best to make Nala deviate from the path of righteousness and forget about his kingdom and his wife but he was very strong in his principles. I will leave him, but I cannot give him back his original form. Shani, leave him and I will take care of him. After seven and a half years, Shani left Nala. Nala was still cooking in the palace, grieving about Damayanti and his kingdom. One day, Lord Shiva appeared in his dream. 
Nala, your hard times are over now. Wake up. Go down to the south of the kingdom and there you will find a tank. Take a holy dip in the water. You will regain your original form. You will also find Damayanti and get back to your kingdom. Nala got up from his dream. Thank you, my lord. Praise you, O oh lord. Nala traveled to the south and approached the tank in Thirunallar. He took a holy dip in the water. Immediately, he regained his original form. Damayanti was brought there by Lord Shiva. She was extremely happy to see Nala. Tears began pouring down her cheeks. My Lord, my prayers have been answered. Now, no one can separate you from me. Damayanti fell at Nala's feet. Nala thanked Lord Shiva and went back to his country and regained his kingdom. All the gods appeared before him and showered blessings on him. Nala, you have seen great riches and greater sufferings. Shani had you under his influence all these years and he tried to test you. But you did not deviate from your path of righteousness and proved your willpower under the worst circumstances. Damayanti, your wife, is an example to women all over the world. She has truly proved her devotion to her husband. It is only thanks to her prayers and devotion that she has got you back safely. You both will be blessed and will have a wonderful life together. Nala and Damayanti lived happily ever after. Once the sage finished the story, Yudhishthira thanked him and vowed not to worry about facing hardships in life. This story of Nala is very popular and has been narrated to generations after generations to inculcate in them the willpower to survive the worst of the times. Damayanti stands as an example of true devotion to one's husband. It was her true love, undaunted determination and belief in the Almighty that won her back her husband.